Hello my friends, Alfred Tardo, the Rebel Turner, and I'm back. Uh, back first of all with a little bit of an apology. Uh, it has been a little while since I've been over here. Uh, well, I mean a few weeks ago, um, I wasn't feeling too well. Uh, so I have been somewhat under the weather. Um, been trying to get myself to come out here and do a little bit of attorney. Well, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I got a little enticement to get out here. If you know me, I cannot pass by somewhere where there's a tree being cut down and I don't stop and see what it is that they're cutting down. So anyway, and on that topic I want to talk you know like I mean I live in a tropical area so I have lots of trees around me but it's funny flamboyant it's real oil. funny that Once even though on the same zone uh, southwest Florida is, uh, quite within Fort Myers, a I see 25 a mile range uh, trees all over the place with this Venice location where I live red, uh, going north or uh, south the vegetation or species of trees that grow a little further north or a little further south from me are very different from what I have in my own in my own area. For instance, up north a little bit, there's this uh, tree jacaranda, beautiful tree that grows, I believe, a purple bloom. Um, so I see a lot of those just. 15, 20 miles north of me, none in my area. In my area, I see a lot of mimosas, which is almost, it's the same family tree, to, so to speak, uh, and it grows like a yellow pom-pom. So I see that as being local, which the mimosa, uh, by the way, cannot turn. It's very, very fuzzy wood. Going further south, well, in Fort Myers, actually, you can get um, mahogany, which doesn't, don't see it in my area at all. And I've looked at the mahogany tree to see what it looked like, and it's a, this beautiful tree with a red blossom on the top. So, whenever I would drive by and I would look at these trees in the distance, a low tree with a white canopy and beautiful red bloom, I always assumed, oh, it must be mahogany since I had briefly looked at it. Well, anyway, on the way back from work, somebody was cutting, a company was cutting down some trees, clearing up a lot. And it was one of those trees. So I pulled up and pouring cats and dogs. Everybody was stopped. Their chainsaws were covered up in plastics because of the rain, how much rain was coming out at the time. And it's like, excuse me. Is that a mahogany that you're cutting down? And he's like, no, it's a royal flamboyant. I'll put royal it up uh, at the background the video, uh, which I took with my cell phone. I forgot the name of it right now. Uh, it a, was a royal something tree, beautiful tree. So anyway, I grabbed a good sized stump, which wasn't too bad to manage which is what I'm starting off with and then I want to like a piece with a crotch and everything that they were cutting was like four foot lengths they weren't cutting them into log sizes it was a company they would grab a, a lift and put it into the truck and dump it off so anyway I grabbed the first log four foot it's like oh that's not too bad actually the wood is fairly light carried it to my truck then brought my truck closer up to the job to the tree stumps and I was looking around and I saw the scratch it's like oh my god I, I gotta get a crotch but this is one this one is a little bit heavier for me anyway I struggled and the guys were laughing at me because I, I mean I was struggling and I finally got it over my shoulder and walked it to my truck got it in so therefore I have a couple of good size logs one is on the lathe one is right behind me that was uh, the smaller of the two logs. Uh, the wood is kind of blonde in color, so anyway, got this blank, and this was the the bottom of it, or whatever. 
and I cut this one in half, split it. Maybe for a natural edge, maybe for just a regular bolt. Well, like I said, excited to get out here and get started. I am going to actually turn this and this one is going to be how appropriate for me anyway for my channel a mushroom bowl I know I've had Tom Kuzia over here already a couple of times for a lesson on these and according to him according to him he has not quite gotten the knack of it so Tom maybe this one is for you but uh, I actually had one of my friends fans who bought one of these from me and upon receiving it I guess he studied it a little bit and he was able to produce a beautiful beautiful one made out of cherry and what did he do he sent it to me as a gift which the video I'll put a link was a gift of gifts I believe uh, so anyway I'll put a link up above and uh, if you want to see what that was but beautiful job so I'm going to take this one put it on the lathe and create one of my specialty bowls which is the mushroom bowl let's get started and that's the piece As usual, I, uh, I generally don't change a system that works well for me. Uh, not saying that you shouldn't. Uh, I'm just saying I generally don't change it. If it works for me, uh, then generally I stick with that method, which is between centers. Spur drive inside the chuck, live center on the other end. And I will start my process, which will be to make the first tenon to go into the chuck. So this one, I mean, I generally don't try to get smack center on these because I think it adds a little bit of character if you're slightly off, slightly, not way off, but uh, a little bit off it adds the wings a little offset or it will make your piece look like it's drooped more on one side than the other rather than being very symmetric and I like that little overhang on one side better than I do with being perfectly flat on the bottom but that is a matter of preference personal preference and not that one is right or one is wrong so it depends, it depends on what you like the best. So I'm going to put it up, but no matter what, I mean very rarely will you get a perfectly round um, log anyway. So if the log has little jogs, those little jogs will add character to the piece so in this case it has very little i have this little piece over here that's slightly longer and less round than this half over here so that would reflect on its final appearance on this side of the log well it's even more round so this will be the bottom and that one will be the top so i can reflect some of that the dimensions on this, when I start this type of a bowl, usually it's whatever the width is, it's roughly the height. So if this is 9 inches diameter, I have around 9 inches length. I'm estimating, I didn't measure it, but it's fairly close to that. So put it up. This wood might be a little bit soft. I don't know if it has the characteristics of the mimosa that I've used, uh, which I hope it doesn't. Uh, it will be extremely soft, so soft that I won't be able to finish it without using a torch to
to burn it up, to dry it up and uh, uh, get it a little bit more under control. I'm going to balance it off just a little bit better than this. It's a little bit bottom heavy. It's very wet. So therefore, this is probably going to be spewing out water as I uh, turn it. The first thing to do is round this over like a regular bottom of a bowl. And I will take it about halfway mark. More or less, round it over, create a tendon over here so I can flip that over and put that in a chuck. Let's get it going. The uh, I'm gonna start this off fairly slow. It's a heavy piece, so maybe uh, 300, 400 RPM. I will see. This is 390 RPM, and that is fast enough for what I need to do at this point. Okay, so I have my tannin ready to go into my 100 millimeter jaws. I want it because uh, on 100 millimeter because this is a little bit bulky and will give me slightly better grip than the 50 millimeter. I will get this a 
little bit more balance right off the bat by taking some of this bulk down here that's going to be the base anyway it will still be somewhat wobbly because you know, like I said this has different uh, different uh, distances from the center over here this is a little bit flared out so therefore it goes down further and you can see that it goes up and down this is the deepest point
Now this part over here is the hardest part to sand because you can't get the sander in there. You can't really put your hands in there to uh, contour it really well. So you are limited on what you can do with this bottom piece. All the way from there to underneath. And uh, out of these pieces, uh, that's the biggest challenge that you have that you face with. It's doing any type of power sand. Unless you want to be there all day and do it by hand, which is an art in itself. But it's an art that I don't have the patience for. You know, I. People get too technical on sanding, I get a little bit upset. It's sanding. Get rid of scratch marks regardless of how you get to it. And then when people start talking about contaminating by using different paper towels during the wipe down, oh my god. <laughs> you don't want to know what that does to me. Uh, uh, really, there's such thing as being obsessive with uh, techni technicalities of, you know, and you know, you can argue uh, that it's correct. The, the analogy is correct, but it's just an analogy. It's a piece of woodwork. You don't need to go to those extremes. I will use a paper towel on Yorkshire grit, and you, if that thing is still in one piece and I still have a clean spot, I will go to it and do my rub finish with it. I'm not going to contaminate anything on a piece of wood. I have a problem. That's why they call me the rebel. Well, I'm going to let this go for a little bit. It's extremely hot in here. And I will be back to finish this up. Uh, maybe tomorrow. And I'm going to see what the wood does. The wood has somewhat uh, interesting grain in some points. Nothing too wow about. 
it is rough to cut. It, I get a lot of raised fibers everywhere. Um, and it doesn't matter whether if it's a push cut, pull cut, any type of a cut, it's thick. So, ago I burned some of these fibers to help me on the cuts or on the sanding on either way uh, and you know it, it will always help there's no question about it but it's very very far from being a smooth cut I feel all the grain going that way so it's like running your my hands through my whiskers after being shaved very close shave uh, uh, so it's uh we'll see